What's up YouTube? In this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to use GSAP and SVGs to create these really cool animations here. So you'll notice that we only have two SVG elements and then this little bit of code here that's creating these really unique effects. So let's get started. So first let's add a div and give it the class of section wrapper. We're gonna play our interaction while we scroll past the 600 VH tall div. Inside of that, we can have another div and we'll give this one the class of sticky element. And this is gonna basically be 100% width, 100 VH height, and we'll do overflow hidden to remove horizontal scroll. We'll also do sticky zero pixels from the top so it stays with us while we scroll. And then we can add an image inside of that. So we'll apply flex center on the sticky element and we'll grab the image and give it the class of image and also pull it from an image we have uploaded here. So this can be 100% width and 100% height of its parent. It can also be a fit of cover and position absolute like so. And then inside of the sticky element, we'll also add an embed for our SVG. So inside here, I have an SVG path of a lightning bolt. And what I'm gonna do is copy it and just paste another copy directly on top. And we'll paste somewhere around 20 copies or so uh, directly above each other like so. And then we can go ahead and just export this out and we'll save it as a bolt using the artboard and save. We'll also have this SVG, which is just a bunch of squares directly next to each other and under each other. We'll export that one out and we'll save that saying boxes SVG, use the artboard again and export it out. So what I'll do is copy the code first of all of the boxes SVG. We'll just open that up and we can copy like so and we'll paste that inside the embed. Now we want this SVG to be 100% width and height of its parent. So inside the SVG tag right here, I'll just set the width and I'll set that to 100%. And then I'll go ahead and set the height also to 100% of its parent, and then we can save. So I'll give this the class of boxes and we'll give it position absolute. And let's go ahead and give it 100% width and height of the sticky section. Now you'll notice it's maintaining the aspect ratio of the SVG we uploaded, but we want these boxes to kind of stretch out to cover the space. So what we'll do instead is inside the SVG tag, we'll add something called preserve aspect ratio, and we'll set that equal to none. And that'll just allow the SVG to stretch out to cover the space. And finally, we can add another embed, and this is for our bolt. So I'll paste in the SVG code for that and save and we'll just give this embed a class of bolt. Now we wanna make this really large. In fact, I'm gonna set the width using VH and I'll go ahead and give this position absolute so it sits on top. We want this empty space within the bolt to basically cover the uh, viewport height of our screen when it's all said and done. So somewhere around 400 VH. And whenever we're creating scale animations like this, if we scale above a scale of one with transforms, things get pixelated, even when using SVG. So it's better to start this at the largest size and scale up to one instead. So that's what we're gonna do here. We'll start it at the largest size that we want, which is 400 VH for the width. And now we can head over to greensock.com, click the Get GSAP Now button, and we're gonna import two libraries, the GSAP Core and GSAP Scroll Trigger. So we can copy this code, we're gonna paste that in our closing body tag section above a code sandbox file, and we can save and publish. So let's create a timeline called SVG stagger. We'll set it equal to gsap.timeline and open up our timeline settings. We'll make this into a scroll trigger, and we want our trigger element to be basically whenever we're scrolling past this section wrapper. So our animation will start when the top of the wrapper is at the top of the viewport, and it'll end when the bottom of the wrapper is at the bottom of the viewport. So our trigger is the wrapper. Uh, we're gonna set start to be when top reaches top, and we'll set end to be when bottom of wrapper reaches bottom of viewport. We'll also set scrub true so that this is a while scrolling interaction tied to our scroll speed. Then we can add some animations to our timeline. So we're gonna wanna animate, basically if we open up this boxes embed, we wanna animate these rectangle elements inside the SVG. So we'll grab our boxes embed and we'll find the rectangle elements inside of it. And we wanna animate them, let's say from an opacity of zero, so they fade up. And let's give it a really fast duration on that box animation. And we'll even apply a stagger so they happen one after the other. 
And you've probably seen me use each before where we create a delay of 0.3 seconds in between each box animation. In this case though, I'm gonna use a mount so that way it crams all of the box animations into a duration of 0.3 and that way it just happens a little faster. And for the stagger from direction, we can try different things like center and that would basically have it animate uh, from that middle box. You'll see it spanning out while we're scrolling past this section. But in our case, we're gonna use the keyword random and that'll just stagger them all in a random order. So now you'll notice while we scroll past this section, these boxes are coming in totally randomly and creating this really cool animation. So now we can animate our Balt SVG. If we open up the Balt embed, you'll notice there's a bunch of polygon elements inside. So we'll animate those by adding another tween to our timeline of SVG stagger. And we'll basically grab the Balt embed, find the polygon elements inside, and animate them from a small scale of 0.1. If we save that and we refresh here, you'll notice they're gonna scale from that top left corner. That's the default position SVG scale from, but we can change that by setting their transform origin either with CSS or by doing a gsap.set on our polygons to a transform origin of center center. And when we save that and refresh here, you'll notice that they're gonna scale from the middle just like we'd expect. So now we can add a stagger to the Balt animation and we'll just pass in a delay of 0.02 in between the start of each of them. And if we save that and refresh, you'll notice all these shapes are kind of sliding out one after the other. We'll notice that the shapes are closer together towards the end and they're further apart towards the beginning. That's because the default ease is an out ease. So we'll have the least amount of change towards the end. We wanna invert that so it feels like we're going into this shape instead of it dispersing out. So we'll change this to an ease. We'll say a power three ease, which is a pretty strong one of in. So that way we have sort of the least amount of change at the beginning and these shapes are really closer together and they spread further apart towards the edges. And when we do that, it really feels like we're scrolling into the shape and it gets larger and then it's gone. So that's looking pretty nice. We also want these shapes here to feel like they're far out in the distance and they're kind of ghosted out in the fog. And the way we're gonna do that is with an opacity animation. Uh, so we're gonna copy this here and we're gonna animate these shapes from an opacity of zero so that they fade up. But we want this to happen over a faster duration. The default duration is 0.5. So we'll do 0.3 on the opacity change. And we want this step to happen at the start of this one. So they start at the same time. So we'll just add a comma here and we'll add this symbol there. And when we save that, you'll notice that all these shapes start in an opacity of zero and they're sort of fading up um, at a faster duration than their scale. So we're seeing all those are kind of ghosted way back there. And then when we reach the end here, they sort of unghost and we see the full thing just like so. So this creates this really realistic looking animation and that wraps up how to create stagger interactions with GSAP and SVGs.